Hello, this is the final episode in my inexpensive static display BB-8 build. In episode 1 I made the body, episode 2 I made the head, and in this third episode I'm going to paint and add lights to the droid. So let's get started. Okay, almost time to paint. I've got my paints ready here. Before we do that, there's one last thing we need to do to this BB-8. Now we cut all of the details in with a really sharp knife went about a third of the way into the phone but you can't really see them so if you take a look at the top of the head there that's not really showing up too much so we're going to take a heat gun and this bit's pretty magical we're going to turn that on and then go over those cuts Going as if by magic, they've all opened up and they look really cool now. Not only does that open up all those details and make them really stand out, but that also heat seals the foam so all the little teeny tiny holes on the surface will kind of close up and it'll make, a, make for a lot of better painting surface. So I'm going to do the exact same thing to the body and then we can actually paint this. There you go, look at that. All those details have now really popped out and are a lot deeper, which means that when you come to paint it, they won't all disappear when you slap some thick paint on there. So what kind of paints am I using? Well, I could use spray paint. The only problem with that is it's really cold outside and it's raining all the time, so you know, that's not really good conditions for using spray paints. It usually reacts weird with the paint and it goes all funny. So I'm gonna do a safer option of using Standard acrylic paint, we've got some white, some black, and some red, and some yellow, which obviously make orange, and some silver. And I'm going to brush that on and go over it with a roller to smooth it off somewhat. Now, this isn't going to be a perfect, pristine looking droid, partly because I think that looks naff, and partly because I want to hide all of the imperfections that are on it, i.e., the bits that may not have glued so straight, or some little lumps and bumps and things, with some battle damage. Um, so if the, if the surface isn't completely smooth anyway, it won't really matter. Plus, how smooth is he really going to be if he's been rolling around all the time? So he would generally be dirty and damaged. So we're going to start with the head. This is the smallest part and easy for me to demonstrate what we're going to do. And we're going to need a crap ton of white. And like I say, this is a white acrylic. This is titanium white. A load of this. I'm just going to square that onto a scrap piece of card there. Let's just take my white paint on a brush and I'm just going to dab that on. I'm not going to brush it on, I'm going to dab it on. I'm not going to roll it on, I'm going to dab it on and I want to dab it on so I can get it in all those little little uh, detail holes that we've made. The only way I can do that is by dabbing it so that the bristles of the brush go into those holes as much as we can. There we go, that's the first coat of paint on and I'll roll it up and I think it looks all white. Haven't done the uh, the neck yet, that's the bit I'm holding on to. So I'm going to go and heat gun this, just gently so I don't want to ruin the paint, just to dry it enough to get a second coat on there. There we go, that's now dry. And that means I can now do the second coat. Yay! Uh, right, so I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to dry it again. Then I'm going to do it again. Then I'm going to dry it again. Then I'm going to do it again until it's a nice white that I'm happy with. And you can't see any of that dark grey showing through. Then I'm going to repeat the process for the body. That's going to take a while. See you later. So I'm using uh, orange paint here. It's actually red and yellow mixed together to make the correct shade. Just going over the orange details of a small brush first of all. And now I'm using a bigger brush to fill in the bits between the outer and inner edge I've just done. Now using some silver metallic acrylic paint to do the silver details. 
Okay, so we've almost finished. All the silver bits are on, all the orange bits are on, but it looks a little bit meh at the moment. I need to make it look a bit better. So what we're going to do is put some, some weathering on this. So what I've got is some acrylic, some brown raw umber, and some black. And I've just put them on a plate here. And I've got some water just to thin that right down so it's essentially really dirty water. And I'm going to brush that on, making sure it gets in all of these little uh, cracks and crevices here. And then I'm going to dry it with some tissue paper and then wipe it off with a baby wipe. And it'll leave it looking all dirty and disgusting, which is what we want because it's meant to look like it's been rolling around in the desert. I'm going to take my brush and a little bit of that browny blacky water. It's been really, really thin. And then we we'll start up here. Just brush that on. If you go the same way as the uh, groove you're trying to get the paint into, it would go in there easily. Whereas if we wanted to get in this one here, it was going down like that, it's not really going in. So if you go the same way as the channel that you're trying to get the paint into, it'll go. No problems. Right, I'm going to take a bit of tissue paper or kitchen towel, just wipe off the excess. Otherwise, you'll end up using a thousand baby wipes, especially as the baby wipes are already quite wet anyway. Could use a, a rag and water for this, but you know, baby wipes are easy. You can use one, chuck it away, get a nice fresh one out. Just wipe over that, and it'll take off the stuff on the surface. But this, where this wipe is flat, it's not going to go into those crevices. So all those crevices have now got that dirt inside them, and you're wiping it off the surface, or most of it off the surface. And that really makes those details stand out, and it gives them a bit of weathering. Then just take the bit of tissue again, the same piece of tissue and go over that and you can clean areas a bit more than others because the dirt wouldn't be a uniform covering over it, it would be heavier in certain places I'd imagine. There you go, that looks a lot better. You compare that to say that bit, makes a big difference. So I'm going to do that to the whole ball and then we're going to use a second colour. Dirting it up a bit now, just take this area here for example, I've taken some yellow ochre Mix that with water as well, a little bit of black and brown in it, just to dull it down a bit. Just going over there for example, taking a dirty bit of tissue that I've been using for the whole thing and just blending that out. Just like that. So it's got some really deep dirt in those crevices and then some, uh, some more isolated spots of this colour. Okay. Cool. And that's pretty much it for the colouring. And then it's going to be on to the lights. Okay then, so the last thing to do is add some lights. Now the lights I'm using are these. These are Christmas lights. They're battery powered, take two AA batteries. I got these from Asda for two pounds and I've bought a couple of sets of the uh, coloured ones, even though I only need the uh, red and the blue. And I bought some white ones as well that I've already started cutting up. And the good thing about these is they're linked together in parallel, so you could cut it and leave just one bulb on there, and that would last for ages when another two batteries. Um, and then you can just splice them all together in whichever configuration you like. To reach from panel to panel, we need some extra wire. So I've just got this, which is the old cable from my heat gun that decided to die. That's got three uh, bits of wire in it. You obviously could buy some wire, but um, why not recycle something that's otherwise going to go in the bin. Now using the Google image I've got here, plus this soft toy again, I can see where the LEDs need to go. Like this panel here, for example, has a red one, a blue one, a red one, and then three red ones down there. They've got a red and a blue on the bottom here. That one doesn't seem to have any, although well, I'm sure that's a white one, according to this picture. And I'm just going to dot them all about. Now the configuration that I've got this in, this is how it's going to be sat because the holes in the top, you can see every panel, which is why I did this and put the one of the triangle things to show off the lights and the features to make it look a bit more spectacular rather than having it so that one of the panels is on the floor. So let's get started. So if we take the red one here, some scissors, a snip there because I might need this green one at some point, so I'll leave some wire on that for a future project maybe. Right there, got a red one. 
And the white one, we make the white one the first one, so I think I've got a white one there with no wire on the end. So that was the end white one for my set. So this is going to be the last panel, going round and round and round and round until it gets to the battery pack. But this is going to be the final one in the string. I'm going to trim a bit of wire. If you haven't got a soldering iron, don't worry because I'm not soldering these because I can't be bothered. Right, now you can't just go twiddling these all together because you need to make sure that the positives are linked up to the positives and the negatives are linked up to the negatives. That's crucial. If you link them up positive to negative, positive to negative, then you're wiring them up in series and then that would share the three volts between all of the LEDs and they, there wouldn't even be uh, enough voltage there to light them up. So you've got to link them up in parallel. So if we take this one for example, Like that it doesn't light up. You get the other way, it does. So now we're going to want to make sure we've got the other one linked up the same as that. So we're going to take this white one. Nope. Yep. This one needs to go to this one. What we're going to do is twiddle those together. This one together. Do a little double check just to make sure it's linked up okay. The both still lighting up. They are good. So now we know that 100% they're alright. We're going to tape those together so they can't touch each other and short out the circuit. Here, so we're going to do with these now that they're stuck together. Touch. From the inside, we're going to push those through those holes. We're going to poke those through just so they come just through and on the surface there. And turn it on. Boom. Just like that. And that's all I'm going to do for all six of the panels. If all six have got lights, I can't remember. Um, obviously, these little, little wires on here aren't going to go from panel to panel. That's what the other cable is for. Right, it's my string of 13, I believe, LEDs, little battery box on the bottom. We take together now, and they all light up. So now we've got to stick those in. Tape here to tape the loose wire to the inside of the ball, so they're not just flapping around in here. The battery box with a long enough wire to sit on the bottom of the ball, which is where it is right now. Just test it. Boom. So there's a quick 360 of his body just so you can see all the lights. Now I understand it's not Christmas anymore, so you're probably not going to be able to pick these lights up in your local store, but if you look on eBay or Amazon or something for multicolored fairy lights, I'm pretty sure you're going to find the same thing I've used. So I've done the exact same thing to the head, I've painted that and added some lights too. Here's a quick look on, at the inside of that. So you see you've got some lights in here, all linked up to this little battery box here. Two AA batteries, press the button on and it lights up. And the head just sits nicely on top there. And he looks pretty damn cool. There's one more cool feature I've added, and that is this. So I've got him, so every 30 seconds or so, he plays a sound. There you go. And how have I done that? Well, I've done that on the cheap too. And that is with one of these. Just a Bluetooth speaker. How rude. Just a Bluetooth speaker I've had kicking around. And I've linked that up at the moment to the uh, Bluetooth on my laptop. But I could also link that up to Bluetooth on my phone or buy a really cheap, crappy MP3 player. 
and plug it into the auxiliary port there and just stick that inside and it'll play noises which is really cool. I've also got it programmed to play uh, short clips of Star Wars music as well which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's BB-8 all done. So a quick breakdown of the costs. The EVA foam mats pack of six was £10. Hot glue £4. The black tape I used to hold it all together was about £5. The paint was £15 although I've still got loads and loads and loads left over. Uh, the lights six pounds and the other bits and bobs that would be things like the paint brushes for the antennas and the uh, plastic bauble that I use for the lens that was five pounds putting the total at 45 pounds if you had to buy everything brand new um, if you already have some paint knocking about and some paint brushes and already have glue and stuff which I'd imagine you do that would come in at a lot less than that so whichever way you look at it really cheap so that's BB-8 all finished, so make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel for updates on future projects and be sure to check out the social media links in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, bye bye!